Okay, who wants to repent right now uh, after seeing that? Uh, welcome, we're kicking off this brand new series called Necessary Sins. And uh, before we jump in, I just want to make a couple of remarks. First of all, I, I just really want to thank everyone for praying for me uh, and for my wife, Susie. We just got back uh, from Cayman Islands, and, uh, and I know I was posting pictures uh, on, on Facebook, and everyone was like, why did you ask for prayer? You're a dog, you're on the beach and all. But that was just in the morning, uh, a couple of days. But really, we were, we were worked hard and heavy while we were there. Susie taught a ladies conference. I taught a men's conference, preached twice on Sunday, then a leadership meeting as well. And every single meal that we went out to, we were actually doing basically church consulting. So uh, it, it was kind of nonstop. I'm really glad to be back. Uh, you know, uh, it was great to preach there uh, in the islands for sure. But uh, you, you know, that there's that old saying that if you can cook, you can cook anywhere. But you always do your best cooking in your own kitchen. And so it's good to be back in my own kitchen uh, because I love the Valley family. I, I really do. I love the Valley family. There's, there, I'm, I'm biased, I'm sure, but I just, I love our church more than any other church. I especially love anyone that's wearing Georgia Bulldog paraphernalia or apparel right now. You know who you are. And so uh, I, I really love that. Or John J. Patriots. And those of you watching it on the video, you're like, what? What? No, it's not, it's not anyone right there. Uh, but we're starting a brand new series uh, called Necessary Sins, and you might have picked up on it from uh, the little bumper there. You know, we're not talking about these sins that, that we all could agree are just horrible, right? Horrible sins like uh, murder, rape, stealing, all of those. Like, But there's these other sins that the Bible talks a lot about that God says, and we're going to be surprised what he says specifically uh, as we start this series about lying. About lying. And so I've entitled this message, Pants on Fire. Uh, and I'm just wondering, are your pants on fire? Uh, have you ever, you remember that saying, liar, liar, pants on fire? Can you imagine how helpful that would actually be if that just happened? Spontaneous combustion in the back part, if you lie, just psh, like that. Now, when I grew up in the Williamson home, it was a fact. Because if I lied, my pants were soon going to be on fire by my dad. And, and that was one thing that was just no tolerance whatsoever. My parents made it really, really clear. Zero tolerance for lying. My parents said, we could deal with anything, but we cannot deal with a lying child. In fact, when I was a teenager, my dad put it this way. And I know you're going to say, well, that's harsh. But it helped me. He said, son, I will believe anything you ever tell me. Until you prove to me that I cannot believe you, and then I will never trust you another day of your life. And you know, that kind of just frames it pretty easy. Uh, like, I'm going to tell the truth. And, and even with our own children, Susie and I, our three girls, as they were growing up, there were times when, you know, stuff happens and, and kids get in trouble. And we'd say this, if you tell us the truth, the punishment is going to be a lot less. But if you lie... The cover-up is always worse than the crime, and it's going to be really, really bad. And, and so uh, I, I love my wife, and, and she does not have an objective opinion about me as her husband. Even as we were working on this and I was sharing with some of her thoughts, she's like, lying is not really a, a thing for you, is it? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, because we all struggle with that. How many of you have ever lied before? Let me see. You're in church, Okay. We all have, but, and, and, but we, we have these kind of lies. In fact, sometimes we call them white lies. Did you know the Bible makes no coloration? There's no colors of them. And, and as I said, we're going to really find out uh, during our time together, it's a big deal to God. And speaking the truth ought to be a really, really big deal to us as well because it's a big deal to him. Let me share with you a, a uh, two verses from Psalms, uh, Psalm 139, which is really my prayer uh, in this whole series for the Valley family. And, and it's in Psalm one, uh, 139, Psalm, and it says this, Search me, O God, know my heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts. Watch this now. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting. Do you know it's quite possible that there are things in your heart and my heart that offend God that no one else sees? No one else knows about. It's not apparent to anyone else. But David the psalmist realized there can be things in my heart and my mind that offend you, God. And I don't want it to be like that. 
I don't want to offend you. And so that's the prayer uh, in this series. Point out, God, anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. So if you have your Valley Christian Church app, I just want to invite you to go ahead and open that up and and fill in the blanks because we're going to find tonight, especially during our time together today, that there's one blank that I think we're all going to really struggle with putting the answer in. And we'll get there in just a minute. Liar, liar, pants on fire. See, we're supposed to speak the truth, but not, not, not to be abrasive, but speak the truth in love. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, uh, it says, instead, we will speak the truth in love. Look, this is why it's so important. Growing in every way more like Christ, who is the head of the body, the church. When we speak the truth, we become more and more like Jesus. When we speak the truth in love. When we lie, we become less and less like our Lord and Savior. And so lying's like a really big deal to God. One of the things that we, I mean, think about it. No one had to teach us how to lie, did they? We, it wasn't like your parents sat down and said, let me tell you what a lie is and don't ever do it. I, I remember when our, our first little girl, Michaela, she was like a year and a half old. She's, she's still sleeping in the crib at night. And we had an English bulldog at the time uh, named Herschel. And, and, uh, and he used to oftentimes go underneath the crib and sleep underneath the crib. Because we're huge Georgia Bulldog fans, bulldog named Herschel. And, and anyway, uh, I remember one time he was, she was taking a nap. She was supposed to be taking a nap in her crib. And we heard this crashing sound come out of the nursery. And we walked in there. And she's standing up in her crib, and I guess she had tried to reach for something on the little changing table next to her, and it fell to the ground. And we walk in there, she's standing up, and she goes, Dirtle, (laughs) blaming it on the dog. The dog wasn't even in the room. The dog wasn't even under the bed. She's 18 months old. She's going, Dirtle, trying to say Herschel. No one taught her how to do that. It's like in us. It's so much in us. It's in me. And I think if you're honest and you stop lying, you'll admit it's in you too. It's in all of us. And so it's so important for us to speak the truth in love. I heard this definition of honesty probably 20 years ago, and it has stuck with me ever since. I think this is the best definition of honesty I've ever heard. And here it is. What is honesty? Honesty is relating to one another at the highest level of truth. That's what honesty is. Not just saying something that's true, but relating to one another at the highest level of truth. The highest level of truth. That's what honesty really is. Now, you can say something true, for instance. You know, you could walk up to someone and say, wow, I'm really glad to see you're not drunk tonight. But that's inferring something, isn't it? That, that, that's just the way you said it like that. It makes it sound like... It's a true statement, but it's not the truth because you've never been drunk before. That's not really honesty. Honesty is relating to one another at the highest level of truth. Speaking the truth in love. In love. Here's, Here's one thing that I think is so important for us to understand. It's not like God just like, this is not good. The Bible makes it very clear. God hates lying. He absolutely hates it. And and I really think, like, if God hates it, we ought to have that same feeling about it. If God hates untruth, if God hates dishonesty and deception, we shouldn't tolerate it in ourselves either. Look at what Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22 says. The Lord detests lying lips, but delights in those who tells the truth. Does God delight in you? Or does he detest your lips? God detests lying lips. That word detest is pretty interesting in Hebrew, uh, which is a language of the Old Testament. To detest something means something disgusts, it's abhorrent, it makes you nauseous. Think about that. God says lying lips makes me gag. When you and I lie, when we're dishonest, we make God nauseous. 
pretty strong language there. The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in those who tell the truth. In fact, Jesus put it this way when he was speaking to the the leaders of the day during his life that were trying to entrap him and always testing him, didn't believe he was the Messiah, the Son of God. Listen to what Jesus said, pretty insightful here. John chapter 8, verse 44, he says, You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. How many of you would like it if I said that about you? Jesus went, man, he was like, Vshoom. So many times we get this picture of Jesus, like he's just this, oh, just like this little weak, humble, just hardly ever talk up. He says, you belong to your father, the devil. Not the way to build a church right there, it seemed like. Not to win friends and influence people really hard. And you watch the, and you want to carry out your father's desires. Look what it says. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding on to the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. And so what can we just conclude from this and this alone? When we tell the truth... We look like our Heavenly Father. When we lie, we look like we have someone else as our Father. The devil is called the Father of lies. When he lies, he's speaking his native tongue. What language does the devil speak? Lies. That's his language. Lies. In fact, that's what Susie was teaching on uh, in Cayman Islands to the ladies down there is lies that women believe, as she has taught here as well. Lies that women believe. And and listen, men, we got a bunch of lies we believe as well. I'll get to that in just a minute. And and so, seems like, God, this is really serious. Not serious in our culture. Not serious in our society. But it's very serious to God, and it's very serious to our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Just simply lying. And so I ask you tonight, are your pants on fire? Are your pants on fire? How how do you lie? How is it that we lie? How how do we lie just going about our daily business? First of all, we we lie to others. We we lie to other people. In Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 5, this is God is speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, and he's, he's kind of pronouncing judgments on the nation of Israel. Look at what he says. Friend deceives friend, and no one speaks the truth. It's a judgment of God. No one speaks the truth. They have taught their tongues to lie. They're weary, they weary themselves with sinning. They've taught them. They've actually created like an art form of who can lie the most creative way and be believed. Jeremiah 9.5. Listen, let me talk to the ladies for just a minute. Do you know that there's been studies shown the average woman lies three times a day? Now, some might be above average. Some of you might be below average. The average woman lies three times every single day. Now, now, guys, before you start looking all strange at the woman sitting next to you, the average man lies six times a day. Twice as much. Average man, six times a day. That's like across the board surveys. And, and so this, this is a real problem that we have and we do things like this like we saw on the bumper we get into work and we say oh I'm sorry I overslept or I got caught in traffic but the reality is or, or actually we say we got caught in traffic but the reality is I just wanted to get an extra hour of sleep or we say <coughs> oh I'm feeling really bad can't make it into work today and then we go Christmas shopping I know none of us would ever do that <laughs> That laughter just said a whole lot right there. So anyway, and, and, and honestly, this is the one thing. I, I struggle with this myself. Like, like you know what? I, I hate this. Conference calls. Conference calls to me. I, 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 you know, because of some of the responsibilities that I have outside our church, I, I find myself sometimes these conference calls. And they're like, I, I get an email, Greg, there's a conference call. And, and I hate it. It's like 30 people on the line. And, and honest to goodness, a lot of times... I just mute the speaker because I know it's going to be like 45 minutes long. I mute the speaker. 
I go get a cup of coffee. I go to the restroom, and then I'll just go, oh, yeah, amen. Then I'll go out, and I'll go check on something else, and I'm like, uh, Facebook and all this. And then they're like, Brother Greg, would you close in prayer? Yes, Heavenly Father, we just come before you today. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. I, I'm being honest. There's just something about it, and, and, and probably some of you are going to watch this video right now that we're on those conference calls, and they're like, I knew it. I knew he wasn't there. I knew he was sleeping. But we lie to others. Here's the thing I think none of us really realize, though. The second thing is, how do we lie? We lie to God. Or we try to lie to God. We, we think we're lying to him. Or sometimes we don't realize that we actually are lying to him when, we, when he sees it that way. Some of you know the story in Acts chapter 5. There was a husband and wife, I won't take time to tell the story, Ananias and Sapphira, and they were trying to pretend to look more spiritually mature and generous than they actually were. And what was interesting is they were lying to fellow Christians, lying to other Christians about what they had actually done, how, how, this, how generous they had been. And Peter, the apostle Peter, confronts them on it, but listen to what he says. This is so profound. In Acts chapter 5, verse 4, he said, What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. He said, you, you thought you were just lying to us, but you were lying to him. And when he said it, Ananias dropped dead. Then his wife came in, and Peter said the same thing to her and said, is this actually what happened? She goes, yeah, that's what happened. Boom, she dropped dead. How many of you know all of a sudden everyone gets real holy when people start dropping dead in church? <laughs> like all of a sudden, I want to come clean. I'm coming clean. We lie to God. When we misrepresent truth of who we actually are to other Christians, or who we actually are, or how we're actually living in our community, we're actually lying to God. Not just to one another, to God. And here's the third thing, and this is kind of the strange, but it's, it's so true. We lie to others, we lie to God, and did you know you can actually lie to yourself? And those are the most dangerous lies. The lies that we tell ourselves, the lies that we make up ourselves that we believe in. We can lie to ourselves as well. In Psalm 119, verse 27 and 29, again, David the psalmist, who, who the Bible says he wasn't, he wasn't perfect, he had sin, but it said he had, is a man after God's own heart. God said that of him. David is a man after my own heart. Not only did he, he write the, the verse that I said, you know, really is our, is our prayer for this series in Psalm 139, but listen to what he says in Psalm 119. He says, help me understand the meaning of your commandments, and I will meditate on your wonderful deeds. I will weep with sorrow. Encourage me by your word. Keep me from lying to myself. Keep me from lying to myself. The prayer of David's heart was, God, show me when I'm lying to myself. Give me the privilege of knowing your instructions. Some of the most dangerous lies we ever tell are the lies that we tell to ourselves. I don't have a problem. I, I, I'm not addicted. I, I'm not hurting anyone. I can quit any time. The lies that we tell ourselves sometimes are the most destructive and the most dangerous. You, you know what I've learned as a pastor? <laughs> Over the last 26 plus years, you can't, conce you can't convince someone who's deceived that they're deceived because they're deceived. <laughs> 
You, you, can't talk, you can't convince someone they're deceived, that they're lying to themselves, that they're holding on to a lie. Because as long as they're holding on to that lie, they're holding on to that lie. You can't talk them out of it. It, it has to be a supernatural breakthrough in the power of God. And, and how does that happen? It happens when that person says, keep me from lying to myself. Search my heart. See if there's anything in me that's not pleasing to you, God. And he says, yeah, Greg, there is. You, 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 this, this, this thought, this idea that you've been hanging on to, it's a lie. You're lying to yourself. You know what I, I, I'm afraid is a real big problem in the Christian church? is that we lie to ourselves and that we really know him and we really don't. We, we think because I attend church, I know Christ. But we may not actually know him. We may know a lot about him. But we may be lying to ourselves and not really know him and have a relationship with him. When was the last time the Holy Spirit convicted you of something? And no one had to point it out to you. You're just doing your thing, and all of a sudden, you hear that still, small voice inside. Greg, you're wrong. You're, you're wrong. And you need to stop, because that's sin. That's one of the main ways that we know, that we know him, because he convicts us. Not condemnation, not guilt, conviction. And it's always with hope, like, I've got better for you than that, Greg. Stop. Change. In fact, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 4, it puts it this way. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. H how do we know that we know him? We obey him. We, we, we do what God instructs us to do. That's how we know. It's not like, you know, shout out on a Sunday morning, and then we just live our lives the way we want to. We don't know him. That, that's not what the scripture itself says. How do we know? I know him. Many people think they know him, but do not do what he commands. It's a liar. We're lying to ourselves. I know him, and God's like, I don't know you. In fact, Jesus even said this in one place in the gospel. He said, many are going to come to me in that last day and say, didn't we do this? Didn't we do this? Didn't we do this? Didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we heal the sick? You know, all this stuff. And he goes, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I said, we did all this stuff in your name. He's like, but you didn't know me because you didn't follow my commandments and my instructions. So, so, you know, I, I've kind of covered how, how do we lie. We lie to others, we lie to God, we lie to ourselves. But here's the big question. Why do we do this? Why do we lie? I mean, what's, what's like the deal with it? What's inside of us? Why we choose to do this. The, the why so many times is always more important than the what. And the what is we do it. And we all raised our hands, right? Everyone, we do it. Why? Why do we do it? Because we believe lies of our own that if I lie, it'll make life easier. I, I, I just want to protect people's feelings. I, I want to avoid conflict. I, I just want to look good in people's eyes. I just want to get ahead. We think that actually there's an advantage to lying rather than telling the truth. Three reasons, I, I think, real quick, and these are not in your notes, so just, just kind of follow along. Three reasons I think that we lie. Why do we lie? I think we lie because, let me just make this personal, okay? 
Let me talk about me instead of talking about you, okay? Just eavesdrop on my conversation with myself. I, I lie because I'm trying to impress people and convince people to do something that I want them to do. I, I lie because I'm not who I want to be. And I don't believe that people will really like the true me. I, I lie because I'm afraid to tell people the truth. I lie because I'm afraid of the consequences. In fact, in your, in your outline right there, on your app, why don't you just, if, you, if you're really full of courage, just, just fill in that blank for you personally. I lie because blank. For you personally, why, why, why do you lie? Because it's almost like as soon as we can identify the why, all of a sudden it becomes easier to tell the truth. Why, why do I do it? Because I'm afraid of people's approval? But why do I, why do I lie? We, we think by lying that it will bring us security, but it actually brings insecurity into our life. Because we can't even keep up with the stories that we told to who. And it makes us so insecure inside. And so many people, you know, it's like trying to build a solid life on a foundation of lies. It just doesn't work. Sometimes we believe, oh, my lie will get me more of what I want. But in actuality, we have less of what really matters. Or we think my lie will help me, will help you to like me. But because of our lies, we find we don't have any friends. Because no one trusts us. Here's the thing. Think about it this way. Jesus said that the devil is the father of lies. Jesus said of himself, I am the way, the what? The truth and the life. No one comes to the father except by me. He says, I'm the truth. I'm the truth. Satan is the father of lies. Every time I lie, I take a step away from Jesus. Every single time. Every time I speak the truth, I begin to look more and more like Jesus' character. How in the world would I ever think, by lying, I'm going to have more integrity I'm going to have more friends. I'm going to have more of what I want when I'm becoming less and less of who it is God created me to be. So important. We, we think this is necessary, but it's not necessary. It's hurting us. It's damaging us. The Bible makes it really, really clear just as I mentioned before, truth is not an idea. Truth is a person. His name is Jesus. He's a person. And the closer we get to him, could I put it this way, the more honest you and I become. And every time we lie, it just shows us, I'm not there yet. I need God working in me still. Every single day. Every single day. The Bible makes it clear that we're to confess our sin to God for forgiveness. But we're to confess our sin to each other for healing. Confess your sins one to another that you might be healed. The book of James in the New Testament says. So I lie because what's in that blank for you? What's in that blank for you? John chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus put it this way, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And truth is not an idea, it's a person and his name is Jesus Christ. And he died on the cross to set you and set me free from our lies. 
that we can be honest about who we really are. Do, do you know one of the times, <laughs> I think especially for pastors, sometimes this can be difficult because there's never an opportunity where you can just say, man, I just feel like crap. <laughs> you you got to kind of like, <sighs> and I've done it before and I'm not proud of it. Having to stand up and, and, and preach a message when I'm shot full of bullet holes. <laughs> when my confidence is at an all-time low, I don't want to be like that. that, that that's when I find that, that, that it's, it's the biggest pull in my life to just act like I got it all together. When on a scale of one to 10, my confidence is like negative three. And it's so easy just to, Greg, how you doing? I'm blessed. I'm blessed, brother. And it's a lie. It's not honest. I don't, I don't, I don't think the, the answer to that is, is, you know, ever a pastor, you know, airing his dirty laundry and what he's struggling with in the moment. But there ought to be someone in the hearing of his voice that knows what's really going on inside. There, there ought to be a circle of friends where you can just be yourself. You can be honest with and open with it, say, I'm struggling, and I, I need you to pray for me. Because pastors are people too. We're not immune to it. So yesterday, <clears throat> we're flying back from Cayman Island. And I was, I don't know, it was Wednesday, but for me it was kind of throwback Thursday. And, and I'm, I'm looking over my notes, I'm thinking about this message and where we're heading in the future. And, and I'm listening. I got my earbuds and I want to listen to music. And I put on Michael Jackson. I'm going to make a change for once in my life. Going to feel real good. Going to make a difference. Going to make it high. Some of you know this song is like, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to make a change. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that change. Woo! Right? <laughs> I Listen, let's start with the man in the mirror. Here's the thing. Imagine if you had a fact checker on you. We refuse to tolerate what we excuse in ourselves. See, I just, just lulled you into a false sense of security. He's about to end the message. Pow, you just got it right there. Right now in the politics, what is this? Like, he's lying, she lying, he lying, she lying. What about you? What if you had a fact checker hooked up to you? What if your pants really lit fire every time you lied or your nose grew? Some of us would be burning and running out with the nose just hanging out really long. Why do we show no tolerance in others what we excuse in ourselves and I'm not going to say that I heard the Lord on the plane while Michael was singing but I will tell you the idea really struck me I think we got to start with the man in the mirror instead of fact checking what she said fact checking what he said what have you said this week that misrepresented the truth to your spouse, to your family, to your friends, to your boss, to your employees. We've got to start with the man in the mirror. And we need the power of the Holy Spirit because none of us have enough strength to change ourselves. Because if we could, we already would have done it. I believe every morning we got to wake up and we say, God, 
I'm not going to speak the truth in love today without your power. I need you, Lord. I'm not pointing the finger anymore. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. And I'm asking you, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, show me what's in my heart. Convict me. And I want to live by your grace every moment. The empowering presence of your Holy Spirit that I can speak the truth in love and I can really be who it is that people think I really am. Well, I don't know about you, but I sure think it's time to pray for me. Anyone here tonight just saying, pray for me? Because if, if lying did cause my pants to be on fire, they're burning right now. Let me just see your hands. Because I want to know who I'm praying for. All right, bow your heads. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that comforts us when we're disturbed, but also disturbs us when we're comfortable. And Father, we pray right now that that same Holy Spirit, we need the presence of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, search our hearts and see if there's, there's anything in our hearts when it comes to this issue of telling the truth or telling even small falsehoods, lies, that your Holy Spirit would convict us and, Father, we'd respond. Lord, we just ask right now, forgive us for half-truths. Forgive us for pretending to be something that we're really not. And and Lord, give us the courage and the boldness to confess that to another brother in Christ or sister in Christ, that we would be healed. Lord, we thank you that you know all there is to know about us, our imperfections and our flaws, but you love us. And you gave your son Jesus Christ to set us free. And may we just snuggle closer to him in truth. And Lord, leave behind a lifestyle of lies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.